So let's look at an example with thermodynamics. I like this, you know it's hot when the dog starts to melt. <laughs> let's just again remind ourselves, first law, right, relates to Q, uh, which is the heat and the internal energy and the work done. This right here, remember, it's the area under the graph, which means if it goes this way, for example, then work is positive. If it goes left, for example, then work is negative. Don't forget about PV equals nRT. We know the change in internal energy equation. And we also have that PV uh, to the power of 5 thirds is a constant, which means like PAVA to the 5 thirds is equal to PBVB to the 5 thirds, and so on. All right, let's go and look at this question now. Now we're told we have an ideal, yay, monatomic gas, also yay. It undergoes the following. First, an isothermal expansion, AB. So from here to here, isothermal, so temperature is not uh, changing. Then isovolumetric change, BC, and that means the volume stays the same. An adiabatic compression, C to A, that means Q is zero when it's adiabatic. And we're told that volume of B is twice that of A. So whatever this volume is here, volume B is twice that. And we're told some points, right? We know that at point A, we know the pressure, we know the temperature, and we know the volume at A. And we're told that the work done by the gas during the isothermal expansion, which is this one right here, is 208 joules. Sounds complicated. Let's see what we can do here. So first we're asked, what is the thermal energy supplied during the expansion AB? Let's just concentrate on this. What does thermal energy supplied mean? This means we want the letter Q. We just want Q. And how do we find Q? If you're not sure, remember, it's just delta U plus W. So I'm just going to concentrate on this piece, right? So I know that Q equals delta U plus W. That means it's the change in internal energy plus the work done. Okay, do I know anything about these? Well, I do know that it's isothermal. And isothermal means the same temperature. If the temperature doesn't change, does that make sense? This right here then is zero? Because it's isothermal. So because it's isothermal, because the temperature didn't change, that means the um, internal energy then changes zero. Why is that? That's because of this, right? If the temperature changes zero, that means change in internal energy is also zero. Right? So I can even write that down. That's because of that, right? That delta U equals three halves and R delta T. And this here was zero. So because of that, the whole thing is zero. And then it's just, uh, hey, look at that. So Q is just the work done. So maybe I'll write that down. So Q is the work done. And do I know that answer? I do know. I do know that the work done, remember, by the gas. Remember, that's because it goes to the right. That means the work done by the gas in the, uh, on the surroundings. Whereas if it went like this right here, this is work done on the surroundings, you know, to the gas here. But this one right here, so work done, it's just going to be 208 joules. So really, that's just going to be the answer. Just Q just equals 208 joules. That was it. So although it looked complicated, sometimes with these questions, if you just are really careful, you take your time with reading the question, know what each of the different variables means, then a lot of times you're just fine. Now let's look at part B. So for part B now, it's the same diagram, same facts. I just put this in here. We're supposed to find the temperature of the gas here at point C. It's a little bit tough because we know everything at A, right? We know P, A, V, A, and T, A. We know those. But we don't know much about C. Then I'll just write this down, right? That we know, we know that P, A, we know V, A, and we know T, A. We know those facts, those are given. But that means because, because we know that P V over T equals a constant, remember that equals NR, and that has to be constant throughout, that means we can say then that, hey, you know what, I know that P A V A over T A is going to be the same as, now let's focus on what we're looking for. We're looking for, well, we need to know P C, V C, and T C. See, if we knew this right here, we'd be set. Maybe I'll put in a different color here. Okay, so this is the piece right here I think I'm going to need to know. Okay. I want this. Right. Maybe I'll just put this down like this, right? I want this. But to do that, keep in mind then, that means I need to know this. I need this, and that means I need to know this. Because I know, I know all the A stuff, I just don't know what this is. 
So I think that's maybe then a good way to go about is just go and try to find out, hey, let's find out what PC is, let's find out what VC is, and then we'll put them together. So for the first part, then let's maybe try to find VC. Let's do that. So how do we find VC? Well, first of all, let's start with uh, something that we do know. So I'll just do it like this. So what do we do know about this? Well, I do know VA, right? I know that VA, and I do know also, remember, I was told at the beginning that the volume B is twice that of A. So that means, this is really important, that was a key piece, that means that B is twice the volume of A. So if the volume of A is 0 0.75 times 10 to the minus 4, that means that volume of B then must be 2 times that. So 2 times 0 0.75 times 10 to the minus 4. So what does that tell me? So I know that VB then is just equal to uh, 1.5 times 10 to the minus 4. Keep in mind that's all in uh, meters cubed. Now why does that help me? I have VB, I don't know VC. But remember, it's uh, from B to C, it's isovolumetric. Remember, so what does that mean? That means the volume doesn't change. So that means then that VC equals VB. Therefore, I can state then that VC is going to be equal to this number right here. So 1.5 times 10 to the minus 4 meters cubed. Yay, I've got one of the pieces that I needed. So I'll just uh, maybe put a circle around that and hold on to it for now. So I've got VC. Great. Well, I guess now then we need to find, let's find PC. That's the next thing we're going to need, right? We're going to need to find then the pressure at C. How are we going to do that? Well, I can use this fact. Look, I know something about P and V. I know at least at A. I also know VC. I need to know PC. Do you notice then I can use this rule right over here? Look, this one right here, that PV is constant. Well, PV to the 5 thirds is constant. So what does that mean? That means I can use this fact. I can say, ah, look at this. I'm going to use that PV to the 5 thirds equals constant. Now, what does that mean? How am I going to do this? Let me just show you. That means I'm going to say then that PA, VA to the 5 thirds is going to be equal to PC, VC to the 5 thirds. I'm going to use that to solve for PC. So that means then I have PC is going to be equal to, let's see, it's going to be PA times VA to the 5 thirds over VC to the 5 thirds, because I just move it over to the other side. Remember what happens if I have something like this here? I can just say it's a VA over VC to the 5 thirds. So I can say that as well. So I can say, therefore, uh, PC is going to be equal to PA times VA over VC, all that to the 5 thirds. That's maybe a little bit simpler to look at. And good news, I know that VA over VC, I know what that is. I know that VA, remember, was 0.75. I know that VC is 1.5. So that means then I can say then that, here, I'll just keep going then, that means PC then equals PA, which I have is 2 times 10 to the 6, all that times. Now if I really wanted to see it all, I could see it. It's, uh, remember, it's 0 0.75. If I really wanted to do all the decimal, uh, not all the decimals, all the terms are here, it's 0.75 times 10 to the minus 4 over 1.5 times 10 to the minus 4. But if you look at this carefully, you should recognize that, hey, these numbers are here all cancel out, and this one here is twice what that one is. So really, it's just the same thing as saying 2 times 10 to the 6 times 1 half, all that to the power of 5 thirds. So let me do that on my calculator. So I'll say, all right, so what's 2 times 10 to the power of 6, and all that times, and I'll put in parentheses, well, um, I'll just say 0.5 actually, whoops, 0.5 all that to the power of, um, and I'll put maybe parentheses again, just to make sure it's as clear as I can make it, 5 over 3. And there we go. So I get 629961. Now these are Pascals, right? So that means then I can say, I'll just put it over here, that means then that PC then was just 629961 Pascals. Okay, now I've got all the pieces that I needed. All right, I'm all set now. So now I can just go ahead and calculate. 
So that means I'm going to say, ah, okay, here we go, part three then. Find. Maybe I'll just write it down, so find, because uh, now I can actually find TC. Right, because I'm going to use that whole fact that we just talked about here. So TC, let's see, let me just put it all together here. If I want TC by itself, I put it up here. That means I have to put all these down to the bottom, so I'll say that TC is going to be equal to, let's see, it's going to be up here. So it's going to be PC, VC, those are going to be on the top here. PC, VC. All that times TA will come to the top. All that divided by PA, VA. This is just a matter of putting in a bunch of numbers now. So what was PC again? PC was 629961. All right. Uh, what else do I need to know? I need to know VC. Do I have that? Yes, I do. It's 1.5 times 10 to the minus 4. All right. What else do I need to know? Um, well, I need TA. Do I know TA? Uh, yes, it's 306. Now all that's going to be divided by PA, which is 2 times 10 to the 6, times VA, which is 0 0.75 times 10 to the minus 4. Now if I want, remember I know, whoops, I forgot to the 75. So 0.75 times 10 to the minus 4. I mean, if I'm feeling a little bit lazy, I can ignore then the 10 to the minus 4. In fact, I can ignore this over this because that's just 2. Now, you don't have to do it that way, but I just thought, ah, maybe it's easier. So let me just do it this way. So I'll say, all right, let me just do a pretty fraction here, and I'll say, give me first of all that number, keep all the decimals, right, times 2, because that was the result of this thing divided by this thing, so I'll say times 2, times 306, all that divided by... Uh, 2 times 10 to the 6, and that's it because I accounted for everything else. And I get 192.768. So I'll put that down. That equals 192.768. Keep in mind that's going to be Kelvin. Therefore, let's see the three significant figures then. TC, the temperature at C then is going to be, whew, it's going to be 1, 9, and I'm going to add three significant figures. So I'll say 193. Kelvin, so 193 Kelvin. Phew! I would say that wasn't entirely simple, that's for sure, but that's why it's a good example to show you how you can deal with parts you don't know by just looking around for some of these clever equations here that we can use. So do you see we've actually used kind of everything to solve this, just about at least.